Hi readers, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm really excited to read you this book today um, because it has to do with our um, polar animal unit in a way. Um, and we're going to talk about adaptations, um, animal adaptations. Can you say that? One more time, animal adaptations. Good, awesome. So an adaptation is something that an animal has that helps them live in their habitat or their environment. It might help them survive um, and keep them safe and healthy. Um, and it might be something that they have just so they can survive in that habitat. So today we're going to talk about animal feet. And this is a really fun book that teaches you about different kinds of animals and the special feet they have so that they can survive in their habitat. Your job as a reader is to pay attention to this book and think about which feet you would want and what you would want to do with them. So for example, I would want rabbit feet so that I could jump really high. Just an example. So I'm going to get started by reading this book. And again, your job is to think out of all the animals in this book, which feet would you want and why? And what would you want to do with them? So what if you had animal feet by Sandra Markle, illustrated by Howard McWilliam? What if one day when you woke up and climbed out of bed, the feet you planted on the floor weren't yours. What if overnight a wild animal's feet took their place at the end of your legs? So it's going to take us through and tell us about different animals and the adaptations that they have. So Eastern Gray Kangaroo. An Eastern Gray Kangaroo's hind feet, so back feet, are super big. Just the sole of an adult's foot can be 18 inches long. Big feet help a kangaroo jump about 30 feet in a single hop. Each huge jump means a kangaroo can cover a lot of ground fast. So for perspective, my dad is like just over six feet and the kangaroo can jump five of my dad. That's pretty crazy. That's a big jump. So fact, Eastern Gray kangaroos live in groups called mobs. When one kangaroo senses danger, it thumps its hind feet on the ground to warn the others. If you had an eastern gray kangaroo hind feet, you'd be able to jump as high as six feet so you could reach the shelves with ease. Housefly. A housefly's feet have tiny claws for gripping. Plus, they have foot pads covered with hair-like parts that give off a gluey substance. So a fly sticks where, it's land, where it lands, even upside down on the ceiling. Fact, a housefly's feet are also covered with sensors that act like your tongue's taste buds. So a fly can taste what it steps on. If you had a housefly, if you had housefly's feet, you'd be a basketball superstar. You could run up the wall and across the ceiling to drop the ball through the hoop. You'd never miss a shot. Green basilisk, basilisk lizard. A green basilisk lizard's back feet have long toes fringed with skin. The, this fringe spreads out when it slaps its foot down. When it slaps its foot on water, air becomes trapped under each toe. 
and when it runs fast, this keeps the lizard on the surface for at least 15 feet. Fact! When it sticks underwater, a green basilisk lizard's fringed toes becomes great swim fins. If you had green basilisk lizard feet, you wouldn't need a bridge to cross a stream, and you'd be on the other side in no time, so you could walk on water. Ooh, one of my favorite animals, a cheetah. A cheetah's foot is made up of soft pads, a center one and toe pads, plus nails. Shaped like that, it has a new name. Instead of a foot, it's called a paw. A cheetah's paw pads are tough and rigid like tire treads, and the cheetah's sturdy nails act like cleats. So its paws keep it from slipping during super fast sprints. These amazing paws help a cheetah run as fast as 70 miles per hour. That's as fast as a car on the highway. That's faster than any other land animal. Fact, a cheetah's pattern of foot pad ridges are as unique as a fingerprint, which means no two cheetahs have the same paws. If you had cheetah's feet, you'd be on time for school every day because you'd always catch the bus. Ooh, a gray wolf. A gray wolf's feet are called paws too. When crossing snow, a gray wolf's toes separate and stretch it apart. That makes its paws bigger, like wearing snowshoes, spreads out its weight. This means its paws don't sink in as deep, which makes walking or running easier. Fact, a special network of tiny blood vessels help keep a wolf's feet warm, even on ice. That's pretty cool. If you had gray wolf feet, you could play barefoot in the snow and still have toasty warm tootsies. Duck-billed platypus. A duck-billed platypus has skin connecting its spread apart toes. This type of foot is called a webbed foot. The platypus's front feet even have skin that sticks out beyond its toes, making them the perfect swimming flippers. But the minute it starts to walk, dig, or scratch, this skin pulls back so that the platypus can use its sturdy, sharp nails. Fact, a male duck-billed platypus back, platypus's back feet each have a spur-like nail to inject venom. A poisonous fluid. This isn't deadly to humans, but can be very painful. If you had a duck-billed platypus, platypus feet, you'd be a fast-swimming superhero with a built-in weapon. A barn owl. A barn owl's feet have four toes tipped with talons, which are long, curved, sharp nails. Usually, three of its toes aim forward and one backward, but it can swing a second toe on each foot to the back. This helps keep an extra tight grip on wiggly prey, such as rats or mice. Fact, a barn owl's middle front toenail on each foot has a tooth-like edge. It first uses this to comb the feathers on its disc-shaped face. Flat feathers funnel sound into its ears so that it can listen as well as watch when hunting for a meal. If you had barn owl feet, you'd never have to bend over to pick things up. Show a connection signal if you ever pick things up with your feet. I feel like I do that sometimes and it's kind of silly. An aardvark. Each of the toes on an aardvark's feet end in a sharp, sturdy toenail. The front ones are shovel-shaped. These are great for digging a burrow for their home or finding ants and termites, its favorite foods. Fact, if attacked by a predator like a lion or a leopard, an aardvark digs a burrow to escape. If caught, it flips onto its back and lashes out with its nails. If you had aardvark feet, 
you could dig super fast, which means you'd be the first to find buried treasure. Giant American, ooh, giant African mil millipede. Ooh, wow, I've never heard of that before. A giant African millipede's body is made up of segments. A baby starts out with just four or five segments, but as it grows, it adds on more. Each segment has about four feet. An adult may be 40 segments long with lots of feet and it needs every single one. It can travel by tunneling through the ground. So while some feet are busy walking, others move dirt out of its way. Fact, a giant African millipede has an exoskeleton, meaning the hard parts of its body are on the outside. Whereas as humans, the hard parts of our body, like our bones, are on the inside. So to defend itself, it curls up with its delicate legs and feet inside and its armor is outside like that picture. With giant African millipede, millipede feet, you wouldn't need anyone else to have a parade. You would be marching a band of one. Ooh, a mountain goat. I love goats. A mountain goat's foot is encased in a hard nail-like covering. Shaped that way, it has a special name. Instead of a foot, it's called a hoof. A mountain goat's hoof is split in two halves and each can move separately. That lets it get a good grip on, on rocky high places. Fact, each half of a mountain goat's hoof has a sharp edge plus a rubbery pad. Together, these add extra grip to keep it from slipping. If you had mountain goat feet, your feet would be all you need to rescue a kitten. Look, there's a little kitten at the top and he has those mountain goat feet. A white rhinoceros. Each white rhinoceros foot is an elastic plaid plus three stiff toes tipped with hoof-like nails. With each step, its foot pad presses down, spreading the toes wide apart. This let the, lets the rhino's feet support its heavy body, and it needs the support. Adult rhinos can weigh as much as 7,000 pounds. Oh my gosh, that is so heavy. Fact, in spite of their size, white rhinos can run as fast as 30 miles per hour, but only over short distances. If you had white rhinoceros feet, your family wouldn't need a car because you could carry everyone all at once. Wild animal feet could be cool for a while, but you don't need your feet to grab food, run on water, or stand upside down on the ceiling. And you don't need your feet to stay well-groomed or to taste what you step on. But if you could have wild animal feet for more than a day, which kind would be right for you? That's the question I was asking you in the beginning. Luckily, you don't have to choose. The feet at the end of your legs will always be people feet. They're what you need to run, walk, dance, my favorite thing, hop, and even just stand in one place. With the right footwear, you can do lots more. Plus, your feet can look very stylish while you're being active. What's special about your feet? So these are human feet. Each of your feet is unique. It's rare for anyone to have two feet that are exactly alike. Toe prints are as unique as fingerprints, and one foot is usually slightly bigger than the other. The Guinness Book of Records lists Brahim Takiola, I'm going to have to look up how to say that name, as having the world's biggest feet. His left is 15 inches long and his right is 14.76 inches, so a little less than 15 inches. No wonder Brahim has to have his shoes specially made for him. They drew a picture of him. Most important, your feet are built for action. Each foot is made up of 26 bones and 33 joints, places where bones meet so the body can bend easily. Think about when you curl your toes. 
Plus, there are lots of muscles to pull on all the, of those bones and move them. Keep your feet healthy. Your feet need to be in good condition to do their best for you, so here are some tips for taking care of your feet. You always want to make sure you choose your shoes properly. Ones that are too tight can be painful and cause problems, such as ingrown toenails. Ooh. Be active to exercise your foot muscles and keep your feet flexible. If possible, walk and play on grass and dirt. That's easier on your feet than being on hard paved surface. Wash and dry your feet daily, especially between your toes. That's the best way to present, prevent problems like athlete's foot, a fungal infection of the skin. Also check regularly for any cuts, blisters, or open sores. If you see any, ask an adult to help you treat them. If your feet don't heal quickly, you may need to visit a doctor. Whenever possible, wear socks and shoes. Socks help absorb shocks and keep your shoes from rubbing your feet. Feet also sweat a lot and socks soak up sweat. Then before bacteria have time to attack your feet, change your socks and wash the dirty ones. So I thought that that book was really cool because I didn't know all of those things about animal feet and all the adaptations and why some animals have special feet so that they can survive in their habitat and they can do special things. So my question for you readers is, what if you could pick any animal feet, maybe it's the ones from this book, which feet would you choose and what would you do with them? So it might sound something like, I would have white rhinoceros feet so I could carry my family to school and back. What would you do with your special animal feet? And we'll meet back here later.